So hi, this is Graham from Genom's Astro, and this is a review of the Vixen AP Advanced Polaris Equatorial Mount. It's a test to see whether the polar alignment scope, uh, whether the method used with this particular mount is going to achieve a good basic alignment uh, in the field. So just as a reminder, this type of polar scope um, relies on a somewhat novel arrangement of a reticule which onto which are marked the positions of three stars Polaris and a star in Ursa Minor and other in Cephas and through a somewhat unusual process the polar axis of the mount is aligned by adjusting the azimuth uh, and altitude bolts of the mount and by rotating the body of the polar scope within the, the uh, polar axis until you reach a point where all three stars are lined up on some markings in the reticule. We'll come back to that, but this is a test. I've spent about five or ten minutes lining up the three stars. I think they're in the right positions, um, but the acid test is whether the mount will now track accurately over a period of time. So I've set up a moderately high power eyepiece. We're tracking the moon and we're going to just leave the mount to track um, there's no PEC or anything like that, we're just checking the basic sidereal tracking rate. So we'll come back a bit later and we'll see whether the moon is still centered in the eyepiece and it'll give us an idea whether this alignment method, which doesn't have a database of go-to uh, stars that you tracked, you, uh, you aligned to at the beginning of the process, we'll see whether a more basic um, method of lining up the mount is effective. Okay, so wait a little while and see how it's working. Okay, so while we're waiting, um, this is a view through the polyscope. You can see some of the reticule, um, and you can see that there's a position for aligning Polaris uh, with a range of years from 2015 to 2040. Um, and you try to align Polaris to be in the gap in that line. And then simultaneously, you attempt to get. Um, the two stars in Ursa Minor and uh, Cephas aligned within these arcs that you can see uh, one on either side of the uh, pole approximately um, and again those have got rotational markings to um, to indicate the year um, there's Cassiopeia and Ursa Major also visible on the reticule to give you a basic um, orientation in the sky. There are also uh, markings on here to use uh, stars in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so what about the polyscope controls? So to turn on the reticle you press this white button. A good feature is that it turns off automatically on a timer so you don't drain the battery, which is something I do quite regularly with finer scope batteries. Um, I find the time is a little bit short perhaps for completing the alignment process but you can always turn it back on again it's a pretty small point. The polyscope reticule can be adjusted in brightness uh, to eight different brightness levels using this knob here and that's a good feature something you use I use during the alignment process where the uh, star uh, 51 Cephas is, is quite faint uh, compared to the other two stars it's quite useful to be able to adjust it. There's a focus ring on the end so that you can bring the image into clear focus and I find I'm a, I wear glasses, that works well. You can get, definitely get a clear, uh, clear reticule. I would say that you have to crouch quite close to the reticule lens in order that you can see the whole field of view of the poloscope, which is quite important with this type of device because you have the three alignment stars that are separated in angle quite a wide range around the um, quarteride area around the poloscope. Uh, as I mentioned before, the scope is free to rotate inside the mount. There are three adjustment screws, which um, I presume is for recentering the reticle if you needed to, but there isn't any information on that um, in the instructions, and so far I haven't uh, touched those. So, in summary, I'd say that the polar scope is well engineered and it offers um, an interesting alternative to the other methods that um, often are used. For polar alignment such as setting the angular position of Polaris against a, uh, a clock face reticule. But it's um, against that it's quite an expensive accessory 
um, compared to other poloscopes for mounts in this class. What else? Well, the AP mount is about is all about clever use of friction. During the observing session, it stays where you point it without the need for right ascension or declination clamps, and this works very well. You can also adjust the level of friction on each axis, for example here, by adjusting a screw here. There is another friction issue which can cause problems. Um, it relates to the latitude adjustment. The, uh, the, the, the mount only has one bolt for setting the latitude. Uh, it pushes against a stop um, and that results in rotating the latitude upwards. And it relies on the counterweight to lower the elevation back down if you turn the screw the other way. The problem is that friction in the system can stop the uh, RA axis, axis from rotating back down into the uh, desired position. Why am I telling you that? Well, you can find um, that's a bit annoying uh, during the alignment process where you need to make small adjustments in attitude and azimuth and rotating the, uh, the poloscope as well. That's a sort of an iterative process. So if there's a bit of problem with friction, it just means you're more likely to um, take a bit longer and ultimately get a, a stiff neck. Probably lubrication will solve this issue. In my opinion, the mount would be improved with either a second uh, latitude bolt to lock the clamp into place, to clamp the, the mount into place, or maybe uh, a worm gear arrangement could be used as an alternative. Okay, so we've come back to the mount. Um, it's been tracking for an hour or so. Uh, the right ascension motor is very quiet in operation. Um, you'd hardly know it was, was operating. Um, you have to listen pretty, pretty close to, to hear the motor. Some observations, the tripod, uh, like all light tripods, this mount is susceptible to being nudged. So if you kick the leg of the, uh, of the tripod, you're gonna lose um, your polar alignment. But I've been pretty careful this time. Let's have a look, uh, try and see, hoping I can show you that we're still lined up with the moon. So if I tilt the camera down to look at the eyepiece, hopefully you can see moon is still centered in the eyepiece so this very non-scientific test shows that if you take a bit of care follow the polar alignment method with this scope which is a little bit different to some other scopes i've used then the basic alignment and tracking seems to do the job um say so not very scientific certainly not going to tell you where your uh, what the performance is going to be like for astrophotography but um it shows you basic operation of the mount and um, probably in keeping with the the kind of back to basics grab and go philosophy that um, that this mount is 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 advertised as so there you go acid test still on target okay thanks for watching